Hey guys, this is Titus back with another episode of The Search for Awesome, and today we are checking out the uh, Roku Streaming Stick. Now this is a pretty high-end Roku in the form of a stick, essentially like a flash drive, but it plugs into your HDMI port. Essentially, it turns your dumb TV into a smart TV, or your slightly intelligent TV into a smarter TV. It's a really neat product for just 50 bucks, or you could build a time machine and get it for $35 on Black Friday like I did. So you may ask, why bother with something like this and not something like, say, a Chromecast? And to be honest, the Chromecast can do a lot of things, a lot of different apps, and it's even the cheaper of the two right now. But what it doesn't have is a remote, and it doesn't have a TV interface. You have to literally just use your phone to interact with the device. You just beam things up. So as you can see, it only has 1080p HD. You're not getting 4K, you're not getting HDR. This is kind of like an amazing smart TV stick of the past. This is definitely not future proof whenever you upgrade your television. It'll work, but you're missing out on some functionality there. It's got dual band wireless, which basically means even if your wireless signal is not super great, this thing should still be able to do a pretty good job. 3,000 channels. They really are the Apple of the smart TV movement. They just have a lot of app support. So let's, uh, let's open it up. This is it. It really looks more like a flash drive than anything else. We'll come back to this in a second. Let's see what else is in the box. Instruction booklet. We don't really use those here. And then you have a plug-in outlet thing. So you might be thinking that this thing can power itself. You can either plug it in to the USB port of your TV and power it that way, or you can plug this into this and then plug it into your wall and get power that way. Then you get the remote here and, oh, look at that. Look at all that savings. Hey, Duracell makes some good batteries, man. This is a point anywhere remote. You don't need to point it at the top. Actually, isn't that kind of like a pointless remote? That's good branding, Roku. Pointless remote. You could like have your blanket on you and then you have the remote on there and, and it works. It kind of has to be that way though because this, this is gonna plug into the back of your television if it needed to like, if you needed to go behind your television and be like, mm, I wanna watch, I wanna watch Gilmore Girls. You, you couldn't do that. Oh, look at that. Look at all these cool services. And then, um, warranty stuff. Then you have the actual instruction manual. I love how simple this is. Boom, boom, boom. Plug it in, power it, and then turn it on, and then you're good to go. You might have to put your Wi-Fi password, but you're good to go. You might have to put in some of your subscription services, but you're good to go. Now, the actual stick itself is very simple. It has a LED light here, and it has a reset button. If it ever gets frozen, boom, you can hit that reset button. And then on the bottom here, that's just how you power it. Now, one thing here to note is you don't need an HDMI cable. I know that's pretty obvious, but that's actually a big deal because on the more expensive Rokus, they don't actually provide an HDMI cable. Not only is it cheaper than like the Roku 3 and 4, but you're also saving money right there. So, uh, I don't have a TV in here, so... Hello, and welcome to my living room and my ginormous 60-inch TV I bought three years ago. Now for the massive controversy that is to power the Roku straight from the television or to plug it into the wall. So many lives lost. Now tell me, was it worth it? Now this uh, actually does matter because if you plug it into USB, then you have to wait for the TV to boot up and then that will then boot up the Roku. Like this. There it goes. Let's turn on the television. Now if we wait. No signal. Give it a second. It's got really nice music though. You can just kind of... And there you go. CNET says it takes like 28 seconds. Now, if you don't want to go through that wait time, you just plug it in the wall. Once the TV's on, the Roku's there and ready to go. 
but then you lose precious plug real estate behind your television, and we all know that there's a shortage on that. Another thing worth mentioning is if you plug it into the wall and your TV supports it, you can actually turn on your television just with the Roku remote. So right now, as you can see, I don't have the television remote in my hand. I'm just going to hit the home button. And would you look at that? It booted up the TV. And... 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 Roku, there it is. Now, with that in mind, I do wish that it had like a volume control on the remote and it does not and look tons and tons and tons of apps look they even have gun talk I don't even know what that is now the general speed of the Roku is really good so I have this on Hulu selected the first episode of the IT crowd I just hit boom and then I hit play episode and within seconds mere seconds there you go. Now I'm watching IT Crowd. I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. I'm in the AMC app, so this is how long it takes to boot up the final episode that they just aired a few days ago. Those activation codes do get a little annoying, but you just type them in and then you're good to go after that. Now we're gonna see how long it takes to boot up for the Walking Dead. So I click, loading, loading, loading. And we're in an ad, just like we wanted. I mean, the whole thing's pretty fast. I'm not really disappointed at all with the speed of this device. Now for this next thing I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna use my uh, tablet. So I have the YouTube app opened, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna connect my YouTube app to the Roku, and then I'm gonna start beaming up things that I wanna watch right now. Click it, and play. And there you go, it's just as easy as that. You can also uh, add things to the queue to play after this is done. Now, I currently don't have a Netflix subscription, but you can do the same thing with Netflix. You can beam things from your mobile device onto the screen with the Netflix app. So you're getting some kind of Chromecast capabilities, but just with those two apps. But let's be honest, those are kind of the only apps that matter. Now while I do have my tablet out, they do have a Roku app which you can use and get a lot of cool additional functionality. For instance, you can use the app like a remote which is really cool. You have all the same buttons as you do on the remote. Now also from the remote control app, it uh, has a headphone button which allows you to do private listening. So either you can listen from the speakers of the device, you can plug in headphones and listen through the headphones, or I've even tried it hooking up Bluetooth headphones to the device that's streaming from the Roku and it all works. Everything is perfectly in sync. Now that along with the ability to queue things up on YouTube are just killer features for me. Whenever I'm working out, what I do is I queue up a bunch of videos, I put my Bluetooth headphones in and I just start working out. Now I gotta be honest, when I purchased this device, I thought for sure that this was going to be a very gimped Roku experience. But I agree with CNET. The bottom line, the new Roku streaming stick is the best value in streaming video hardware, period. And this is uh, CNET saying this, not Jim Bob's reviews in Emporium. I always wondered why Rokus were so popular, but now I get it. They're great. They do lots of things and they do it very, very well. I like this product so much, I bought three of them. And even, check this out. I even got the Roku 39 inch television with all the Roku functionality built in. I bought it for my in-laws. I bought this one for my living room TV. I bought this one for the TV in my garage where I exercise at. And I bought this one as a gift. The one I just unboxed.